All right, we're back. We're on page 205. We just spent uh, several videos and probably a long time uh, converting rectangular to polar, polar to rectangular. I mentioned a lot of times during that, that there were some generalizations that you want to be aware of, not necessarily memorize. We're going to talk about the ones that you should definitely memorize and the ones that you should just be aware of uh, right now. So uh, let's look at these. So lines are like less important than you might think. Uh, you think they're important because you're living in a rectangular world where x equals a constant, y equals a constant. Those actually define our rectangular coordinate system. They don't mean as much in polar because you just don't run into them. But you could, in general, kind of do these problems. So we could say that r cosine equals c. So r equals c times. Uh, so c divided by cosine, but I'm going to write it as uh, c times c cams. Of theta. All right, so we could do that. Don't memorize that, but be aware of it, right? You see um, r equals something times secant. Start thinking like, oh, that's an x type thing, and you kind of go from there. So that's what I usually do. Here, r sine theta equals c. These are the kinds of things that if you like uh, become a math teacher who deals with this a lot, you can't help but memorize them, even if you like don't think it's worth it to have memorized them. Just depends. So this will be c times cosecant of theta. And then y equals mx plus b, I think, is the least useful one to have memorized uh, for sure. But you, uh, what did, that's supposed to be an equal sign. You rearrange it a little bit. And then uh, I'm going to factor the r out like immediately, right? So y is r sine, so sine of theta. And then uh, minus m. And then x is r cosine, but I'm factoring the r out, so just cosine equals b. So we get r equals b over sine of theta minus m cosine of theta. I don't think these are worth memorizing, um, but you could. I mean, they're generalizations. Generalizing is never really bad. Let's take a look at another type of line that hasn't really come up yet, but turns out is like super important. So let's look at lines that pass through the origin, right? So we have uh, y equals mx. So this is a line that's passing through the origin. So how can I convert this? There's two. So I'm going to give you two options. They're basically the same option. Uh, here I have that. Uh, and what am I doing? So uh, here I have y is equal to mx. So y is r sine equals m times r cosine. And then I can divide both sides by r because r is not always equal to 0 because it's the full line. Um, and then I can divide uh, both sides by cosine. So sine over cosine. So I should probably show some work here, uh, but I like, really don't want to. But we'll get sine of theta over cosine of theta is equal to m which means tan of theta equals m, which is not really where we want to stop. Where we want to stop is we want to find out theta. You should solve for the variable, right? The variable is theta. It's the independent variable. It's kind of interesting. Theta is tan inverse of m. So why on earth is this an important thing? So the other method, by the way, is you start with this and you say it's y over x is equal to m. Uh, and then uh, you remember that y over x is the tangent of theta. So you get tan of theta. It's like a little more direct, but like in my experience, fewer people think to do it. So not really. Yeah, choose, choose your poison. OK, so why are these important? These are important because in polar, there's two types of grid lines that really matter. There are concentric circles. And those are your r equals, right? Those are constants. So your two constant functions in polar are r equals something and theta equals something. So theta equals something is this. Theta equals something could be this. It's all your radial lines. So your constant functions in polar, so your constant functions in polar, are r equals a constant 
and theta equals a constant. Just like in rectangular, your constants in rectangular are y equals a constant and x equals a constant. They're vertical and horizontal lines, but our grid system in rectangular is based on vertical and horizontal lines. In polar, our grid system is based on concentric circles and radial lines, usually associated with the unit circle, but really like any angle. That's why these are super important lines. So this one you should memorize, especially because when you run into it, people can never remember it. Um, so commit that one to memory. Okay, these circles are really important. So first of all, there's like a gap in the notes. I don't wanna say an error, but a gap. You're supposed to be tangent to the origin for the first two. So for this one, so tangent to origin, therefore R must be equal to H. That's the only way you're gonna be tangent to the origin. So really what we're dealing with is something that looks like, well, X minus H squared, plus y squared equals h squared, right? So it's gotta be tangent to the origin. And if it's tangent to the origin, then this conversion, we already kind of know, but let's like go through it and see why I keep saying it's the diameter times cosine. So here, I'm gonna expand, whoops, minus, minus uh, 2xh, I guess, I guess. Um, plus h squared plus y squared plus h squared. Okay, so what are we doing? Uh, we have x squared plus y squared, and that's good. Minus two, I'm gonna say two h times x equals zero, because the h squareds are gone. Okay, x squared plus y squared is r squared, minus two h, nothing we can do. And then this is r cosine theta equals zero. We can factor r, get r, minus 2h times cosine theta equals zero. So either r equals zero, which is extraneous, so throw it out, or r equals 2h times cosine of theta. Okay, so since it's tangent to the origin, so where could I draw this? Um, I'm gonna draw a tiny, you know, I'll draw it down here because there's like nothing to do down here. So since it's tangent to the origin, like if this is h, then this would be 2h. We'll get, oh man. I think if I hold this, it'll turn into a circle. Whew, how nice is that? Um, so there you go, right? It's 2h is the diameter. If h is negative, I'll just be on the other side, right? And so like, that's how it was working out. So it always works that way. So that's definitely worth memorizing. And here, same kind of deal. So tangent to the origin, therefore um, k is equal to r. Really r is equal to k, I should say. Does it matter? I don't know. But since I don't know, I'm gonna do it the way that I think makes the most sense. All right, we have this. So we really have x squared plus y minus uh, k squared equals k squared. And then the k squareds are gonna cancel out and it's the same basic idea x squared plus y squared minus 2k times y plus k squared plus k squared. So x squared plus y squared minus 2 times k times y. I don't know why I'm putting so many multiplication symbols, but I am. So what are you going to do? So we get r squared minus 2k uh, r sine of theta. That was slow. It's like my brain got confused about what I was doing there for a second. Um, so here we get r and r minus 2k, what? 2k sine theta equals this. And then uh, either r is zero, which we know is extraneous, so toss it out, or r equals 2k sine theta. But 2k, again, is gonna be the diameter. If k is positive, you're on the positive y. If it's negative, you're on the negative y. Um, so in general, it kind of looks like, actually, I think this will become a straight line if I hold it. I got to learn how to use this better now that I'm like, I, so I started on page 209 when um, we had the uh, COVID-19 outbreak, and then I went straight up to page 329. Now I'm going back, finishing these, and then I'm going to go back to the very beginning and, and plow through. That's like how, that's the order of creation for these videos. So like, who knows when you're jumping in? Uh, but if this is k, and then this is 2k, 
me draw a circle, do the fancy thing where I hold it at the end and hope that it sort of becomes a circle. I can kind of move. Ooh, there was like a little grid there that wanted to line them up. So we get this. So you can see that you're gonna get two times the diameter time sign if it is on the y-axis and tangent to the origin. And then we have this type. So it's not super important for you to understand this like right at this moment, but uh, these two, this and this, when you graph them, they both take only pi to trace out. They take pi to trace out. So you go from theta equals zero to theta equals pi, you will get the entire graph. So that's gonna be important later on for a variety of reasons. One of which is in calculus, you're gonna wanna like find the area, find the circumference using um, like advanced techniques, let's call them for now. And if you have the wrong boundaries, if you go from like zero to two pi, you actually end up getting double what you're expecting. But you don't even know you're getting double unless you know to expect it, so expect it. This, on the other hand, is gonna take zero to two pi. It's gonna take two pi to trace out. Feels right because it's a circle. So what do we do here? Uh, so x squared plus y squared equals r squared. This is this is trouble because I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna like, let r equal uh, the radius. So uh, because this is just weird, so it's really like r squared equals uh, the radius squared, so you get r is equal to the radius. I feel like that's the easiest way to write that uh, because like r is the radius, but it's also the variable. It's a little confusing. Uh, so these these are like your basic things. So if you want to graph r equals five, there's five, and you go, and you get that. Um, so that one's the most basic. This will always take takes two pi to trace out. And so you wanna start thinking about that because that's the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually graph some things in polar. Um, but these are the things that you need to memorize. So memorize these for sure. Memorize this for sure. Also understand them, but memorize them uh, because you know understanding is super important. But if you never memorize it and you only understand it, like it's gonna take you forever to do anything. So. This is like your alphabet. You're learning the polar alphabet. You need to know these things. These, just be casually aware of. You don't actually need to memorize them. But anyway, we're done with this page, so I'm gonna cut this video here, come back in the next one, uh, and keep going. So I will see you then.